This is the brand new Comandante C60 Barracuda hand grinder, and it's $650. Effectively in the same price range as grinders like the DF83, the Eureka Mignon Specialita, and several other Eureka Mignon grinders, and the Timor Sculptors, all of which are very capable and very popular electric home coffee grinders. The original Comandante C40 had practically been the gold standard of the hand grinder market for as long as I can remember, which granted isn't that long, but it's been a very popular grinder. With the impeccable German build quality and 40mm conical burrs, the C40 had become something of a benchmark for great performance and even commonly used for measuring grind sizes with the Comandante click system. And recently, Comandante has dropped the C60 Barracuda a hand grinder that features new, massive 60mm conical burrs and an all-steel, impressively constructed body that feels as premium as its price point might convey. So how does this grinder perform, is it worth the money, and is it the right grinder for you? That's what I'm hoping to help you find out in this video. Before we get into it, a huge thanks to Specialty Turkish Coffee for sending this out to me on loan. They are not influencing this review in any way, no money exchanged hands, and no other agreement was made other than, hey, have some fun with it and send it back when you're done. They will be stocking this grinder as one of the US retailers, so I will leave a link to them in the description down below for those interested. This is the embodiment of the phrase German engineering at its finest. This all-steel construction grinder exudes quality. Every component feels intentional, every element of the design of this grinder feels like it has a purpose, no wasted parts, no unnecessary gimmicks, just a solid hand grinder that feels like it could double as a weapon. The sheer density of this grinder is just crazy. Picking it up for the first time, I was shocked by how heavy it was. I was also shocked by how much it didn't appear to be that much bigger in size compared to the C40, despite having a conical burr set that is 50% larger in diameter. In the hand, the grinder feels ever so slightly larger, but certainly not to the point of it being unusable, and I have relatively small hands. There, there's a joke in hidden in there somewhere, isn't there? The body of this grinder is made of solid stainless steel with beautiful machining work done to create this gentle design curves around this grinder. This appears to act as both a nice design element while simultaneously giving you a little extra grip on the grinder, something I did find to be sometimes an issue with the C40 texture. The catch cup appears to be the same as the one used in the C40 and are interchangeable. Now this grinder came with the Big Joe knob compared to the standard smaller handle that comes on the C40. For my size hands, I actually do prefer the smaller handle on the C40. The grind adjustment mechanism of the C60 more or less is the same as the C40, but with a new solid brass dial, which adds to that premium feel of the grinder and suits the new grind adjustment mechanism name, the GX50 Gold Clicks. Now whether it's due to a new design or simply a larger burr set, it was much easier to try and find the exact zero point of the C60. From there, adjusting for grind size is super easy to do if you remember the rough ranges for the grinder by counting your clicks as you turn the adjustment dial. I have heard that with some people, it's sort of a love-hate relationship not being able to actually read your grind size adjustment anywhere on the grinder, while simultaneously also being super easy to zero out and repeat the clicks if needed. Now, I wasn't actually sure if the larger burrs would lead to having a harder or easier time grinding through beans. In testing, I found it more or less the same effort compared to the C40, but it did seem to chew through the beans a little bit faster. Here's a quick side-by-side -side of the C60 performance against the C40 at a similar grind size. Now, if anything, the only fatigue I felt while grinding was from the sheer weight of this grinder, and that's what made it harder to grind with versus the C40. The stainless steel body also didn't help with anything because if your hands are a little too dry, the grinder does get a little bit slippery in the hand. You will still develop quite a bit of chaff with this, so I would do just a little bit of RDT prior to dosing your beans just to help reduce that chaff and mess. So how does it actually taste in the cup? Well, it's great. It's everything you'd expect to get out of a Comandante hand grinder, but that might also be its problem. I found a Cups Brewed on the C60 very comparable to Cups Brewed on the C40. Now, I'm no burr expert, but the burrs on the C60 seem to be essentially the same, but bigger. This led to a very similar cup to what I'm used to from the C40, having used that grinder for a few years now. When my beans had cooled down, I found that maybe, just maybe, the brews in the C60 were a little bit cleaner compared to the C40 overall, but it might also just be placebo. Now, maybe somebody with far more grinder expertise and burr expertise like Lance Hedrick may get around to reviewing this grinder for a more detailed and experienced head-to-head, -head, but in my personal testing period, I really found the cups to be quite similar. 
Now with regards to espresso, unfortunately, I don't think this grinder has enough steps for dialing in espresso. The Comandante C40 combined with the Red Clicks modification effectively doubled the steps, and this made it pretty suitable for actually dialing in espresso, but here it's much more limiting. I think this grinder may need something like the Red Clicks mod equivalent to the Ford C60 to get more adjustability for espresso if you do want to grind for espresso, which I will say is tiring. All right, so I've gushed over to build quality. I've talked about how I found this grinder performed. Now let's talk about if I think it's worth it and more importantly, who this is for. There's not a lot to dislike about this grinder. Honestly, the biggest one is surprisingly one of its most advertised features, the hefty weight and premium build. Now in my experience, buying a hand grinder is primarily for one of three purposes. One, it's usually a lot cheaper than an electric grinder. Two, it's great for traveling. And three, it's going to save you the countertop space. The Comandante is neither cheap nor particularly great for traveling because of its excessive weight. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still relatively small and light compared to an electric grinder, but still certainly not the most travel-friendly grinder when you're trying to pack in as much density and weight as you can into this small device. And one other really small thing I'd mention that isn't necessarily a bad thing, just an odd little thing to nitpick at. You know how if you hold a bunch of coins, your hand kind of gets this old, musty, metallic coin smell afterwards? I've noticed that the same aroma occurs after using this grinder for a bit. Again, not a bad thing, just an odd thing I thought I'd mention since you are gripping a ton of solid metal. So finally, is this grinder worth it? This hand grinder is $650. Let that sink in a little. That is a lot of money for a hand grinder. It certainly feels as though you're paying a premium here for that German engineering and Comandante brand. But with the steady trend in the world of the race to the bottom with the cheapest, best performing grinder, it is interesting and a little bit of a breath of fresh air to see Comandante come out with something that is on the other end of that spectrum on the ultra high end range of hand grinders. From the super premium materials and build to touches like the solid brass dial, it's just really nice to see a product that isn't trying to be a best budget winner these days. This is undoubtedly a great grinder, but I think today's market might not be ready for it. There are just so many options out there and when you have great value, getting you great cups of coffee at an all-time low price point. The C60, however, does feel like a testament to Comandante as a company with the German engineering and long-standing Comandante brand. But for less than half the price of the C60, my recommendation for a hand grinder is still going to be the original Comandante C40. For performance that is extremely comparable, quality that is still top-notch, and a price point that doesn't hurt nearly as much, the C40 is the way to go, in my opinion. So then who is this one for? Who is the C60 really for? Well, it's a top-of-the-line hand grinder. It's Comandante at its best with a premium price tag to match. Maybe the C60 is for the brewing enthusiast that already has the best of everything. It's not necessarily going to be a grinder that you pick for its value in price to performance, that's for sure. It might be for those that want something to flex on with their other nerdy coffee friends with. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review of the new Comandante C60 Barracuda, and I'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below if you have had one of these or have had the experience to try one. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.